Hey there, everybody. I've been sharing a lot about these visionary state experiences I've been having throughout my life, but today I thought it'd be fun to talk about a possible astral projection instead. So around the age of 10, I might have been introduced to Stephen Malander of Cabri Voltaire during an out-of-body experience. So this would have been right around the year of 1985, when my dad used to listen to a lot of Cabri Voltaire. Now, I've always liked this band too, and I have a lot of respect for them. Um, they probably had one of the most interesting careers of their kind. So these guys are like underground electronic music or one of the pioneers of industrial music going back to the late 70s. So anyways, I love these guys a lot. We've listened to them so much, and that's why I'm kind of surprised that I've only ever had one dream about Stephen Malander. So anyways, um, I found myself out of my body. And first thing I thought is I might be dead. So <laughs> I, I speculated that we might have been bombed by another country and all this type of stuff. And um, of course, I thought I was dead just because I was suspended in the air. Everything was like a monotonal, uh, pale blue every place. And I thought, well, you know, what if I just died? You know, what if I was sick and we didn't know it? Who knows? Anyways, I wanted to find an adult and ask what's going on. And so I tried to go up the hall to the living room and I noticed that um, I wasn't walking. Instead, I was drifting and and more or less, you just kind of will yourself. You know, you just go where you think and then uh, you get up there. I got up there. I didn't uh, I didn't find anybody. And then so I, I drifted down to the other end of the house to look for them. I didn't find them there either. But I did find a guy down there sitting on my dad's end of the bed and uh, on his side of the bed. At first glance, I thought he might be my uncle. Now, there was a mirror on the wall across from us where we first made eye contact. And then he turned his head, and it seemed kind of a like a heavy connection at first. He had really pale blue eyes, so I knew this wasn't my uncle because he's got dark brown eyes now. They both have this dark, uh, fuzzy, flat type, flat top kind of hair. Like, I love the touch, like, yeah. Right, but I knew this wasn't my uncle, and I wasn't sure who it was. And as soon as I wondered, I realized this is somebody that my father invited here. And I thought, okay, you know, maybe this is somebody I don't remember from up north that uh, showed up in the middle of the night. And maybe my parents said, "Go ahead and use our bed while we're off to work." So I figured, you know, maybe this guy's just getting out of bed. He's sitting there naked, and I'm feeling kind of embarrassed that I just walked in on him. So I, I'm like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. And I, and I got out of there, and then I woke up, and it was all over. And um, so, anyways. Really, the only proof that I have that I may have seen uh, Stephen Malander in Astral Projection is that, like, a few years later, um, we were watching their video for Sensoria, Sensoria. And just as he looks into the camera, it was like that moment where our eyes met, and I knew deeply this had to be the same person. So really, that's all I've got to prove that I saw him in Astral Travel and that um, I read up on Astral Projection a little bit later. So it has all the signs and it has that feeling. And um, a lot of times when you discover Astral Projection, you realize you may have been doing it all along. So I think um, up in Port Huron, I think I had gone drifting through the house there. I think um, down in the Florida Keys, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've uh, had a chance to crawl along the ceiling at that house. And in fact, there was a song that goes, Have you ever had the feeling? That you were standing on the ceiling by wire. So if you've ever heard that song, those guys definitely know what they're talking about. Anyways, um, I do believe the guys from Cabaret Voltaire find uh, paranormal activity interesting as well. So interesting as well. So I kind of hope Stephen Malander has a chance to hear the story because maybe he was on the other end of that. Maybe he went out of his body. And he drifted over to our house at that moment and, and made eye contact with me just because my dad listened to their music so much. And so that makes him sort of welcome in spirit and on a subconscious level, maybe he was always welcome in our house for that reason. And uh, in reality, uh, my dad would have been happy to have him as a guest. He would have been happy to offer up his own bed to Stephen Melander. So um, so that makes a lot of sense. Now, um, the only dream I've ever had about uh, Richard Kirk um, was one where um, he was visiting with me and my dad. And so with Stephen Malander, it could have been astral projection. This one, I think, was just more of I went to sleep and dreamt. So um, now Richard Kirk, um, I, I remember him having more like, you know, kind of long bangs to the side. You know, I kind of had an idea what he looked like. But in my dream, he kind of made me think of Fred Flintstone, you know, kind of this big, slightly chubby guy with somewhat spiky hair but then he had some long hair in the back 
Now, even though um, he seems somewhat unrecognizable, I still felt that this was Richard Kirk. And um, my dad and I were arguing about something where he was like, you really need to stop talking about Bill Lieb, Jody. And, and I was like, yeah, but, and I was trying to defend myself. And then all of a sudden, it's as if Richard Kirk took me to Vancouver, Canada, and I was suspended where I could see, uh, like a main highway with a, um, a 90 degree angle ramp coming up to it. And I was just thinking, how dumb. And I know this is silly that, um, I was thinking how dumb that they have 90 degree angle on ramps to their highways because in reality, uh, when I Googled Vancouver, Canada, um, they do. And I, and I was kind of thinking how dumb. And that's when I kind of had that flashback. But anyways, funny thing about that is that's where, um, Bill Lieb is from. And, uh, and later on, I saw a picture of, um, Bill's partner, Reese Fulber, standing next to, um, Richard Kirk, and he looked a lot like he did in that dream, kind of this big guy. So it kind of gives me an idea, like, um, how big, uh, Richard Kirk is standing next to me, because, uh, Reese Fulber and I are about the same size. So it was, like, really interesting. Um, these are both sort of premonitions. Like, I didn't know, uh, who Stephen Malander was when I dreamt about him with, but with Richard Kirk, he just looked so different in my dream, but I knew it was him. And then later seeing, uh, that picture, um, thought, oh, wow, he really does look kind of like Fred Flintstone with, long hair in the back. So anyways, <laughs> I kind of consider these to be artist dreams, you know, when I have dreams like these, these could be ones saying, you know, maybe I should come join them, you know, like seeing uh, Stephen Malander in Astral Projection could possibly be saying, hey, you know, we're on the same playing field. We're on the same plane. We could see eye to eye. I'm um, seeing um, Richard Kirk. Um, it's, it's kind of a, 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 a I don't know, maybe it's a personal issue. Like, I feel bad. Like, my dad likes to shame me. People like to shame me for talking about Bill Lieb or whatever. But Richard Kirk was probably trying to give me the go-ahead. Like, it's okay, you know. Um, and then he and then he took me to Vancouver. So that's kind of funny. And then, but then um, seeing him standing next to Reese Fulber in a picture later um, kind of brought that dream full circle. Anyways, um, this is just another um, kind of colorful experience where I think I've had like a premonition or something about somebody in the artist realm, somebody that I uh, have a lot of respect for, somebody that I'd hope to grow up to be more like someday. So anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed my story here, and I'll talk to you soon.